We begin tonight with some late breaking news. Shots fired near a bus stop said one woman to the hospital. Police say that she was shot in the neck. It happened on the city's west side along Highway 90 near Springvale. That's inside Loop 410. That woman is described to be in her 30s and surprisingly, police expect her to be OK. But the shooter remains on the run tonight. Investigators are speaking with witnesses in the case. New details in the sexual assault case against a local teacher and coach. We've now learned 28 year old Keith Aaron Cottrell worked at Compass Rose Legacy Secondary School. The charter school says SAPD confirmed the victim is not a current nor former student of Compass Rose. Meanwhile, Idea Public Schools confirmed Cottrell worked at Idea May Mays until early August of last year, but it's not clear if the victim went to school here. Officers said Cottrell is accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a girl younger than 17. San Antonio police believe there could be more victims. Officers are urging possible victims or anyone with any information to call the special victims unit at 210-207-2313. Now to the border and the unfolding humanitarian situation there. A change underneath the International Bridge today. Our Steve Spreester joins us live from Del Rio. He's been there all day long. Steve, most of the 15 to 16,000 migrants have been removed from the bridge area. Obviously, a lot of unanswered questions still tonight. Absolutely, Jaffney. And uh, as you can tell behind me, the International Bridge from Del Rio to Acuna remains closed at this hour. They are letting no traffic over it. And that is of concern because this is a vital entry point for both the United States and Mexico. A lot of commerce and a lot of workers go back and forth over this bridge. But you mentioned the migrant situation off the top of this segment. And there were migrants that were clearing out just across the border in the excuse me there were migrants that were taken from underneath this bridge a makeshift campsite where many of them have spent the last week and a half has been cleared up there are still questions about where they were taken though a group of Haitian Americans arrived here to Del Rio to help and in some cases legally represent these migrants and neither they or their loved ones know where they are tonight Meanwhile, as we're on one side of the bridge just across the border in the city of Acuna, there are several campsites where Haitian migrants are taking refuge. The images are different from the cramped campsites we saw under the bridge in Del Rio earlier this week. The tarps and tents are set up in Acuna in a brushy area. The Red Cross on site to try and offer some help for those in need. We've also seen camps pop up in Reynosa, just across the border from McAllen. Today, Mexico's president saying he doesn't want Mexico to be a migrant camp and wants to fully address the situation. Earlier this week, Mexico's government began flying Haitians who were seeking asylum to a detention center near the Guatemalan border. So what has this last week and a half been like for the people who call Del Rio home? It's a question that I asked some of the people who live here, and the answers were sometimes emotional. A Border Patrol van ride from under the bridge to a Del Rio welcome. The Valverde Border Humanitarian Coalition setting up a makeshift shelter, a place of refuge before these mostly Haitian migrants leave this border town on buses. Is there an overwhelming message that you're hearing from these people that you're seeing this week? They're eager to reach their final destination. They're eager to be with their families and reunite with loved ones. Um, and they're eager to start their new life in a in a country that's that's safe from feeding and housing law enforcement to feeding and collecting diapers for the mostly Haitian migrants, restaurants, the medical community, churches stepping up. What I hope has been learned is that we can, as I think we did this week, set aside the political battles and just take care of people. What have you learned about your community? Oh, so they're unreal. Yeah. Uh, Unreal. <clears throat> the amount of hell for anybody, it don't matter. <clears throat> Putting politics aside to help people. Valverde County Judge Lewis Owens is not a fan of the current administration's immigration and border policies. But he knows 11 babies were born in his county in the last week and a half to migrant mothers. One was born right under the International Bridge. People needed help, and Del Rio responded. He's hoping. It's how they'll be remembered. This is the America that we are. 
not all this other stuff that's portrayed 90% of the time. This is who we are. Uh, that's what I've learned. Uh, yeah. And it's that simple. It really is. I mean, you have people from both sides of the fence and really, really vocal on both sides of the fence. They're all willing to help. By the way, we saw about 30 Border Patrol vehicles actually leave the bridge area behind us about an hour ago. Some DPS troopers have also gone home, but there is still very much a law enforcement presence along the border and in the city of Del Rio. And there is still a lot of questions. How did so many people get so far in such a short time and end up at one place, Acuna, to cross into Del Rio? But those questions are for later. For right now, the people here in Del Rio that I talked to are hoping that this bridge reopens and they're hoping for normalcy. In Del Rio, Steve Spreester, KSAT 12 News. Steve, thank you for that outstanding coverage throughout today. Here at home, San Antonio police need your help finding this woman. 18-year-old Kimberly Ray Kochnestein is wanted in a case where an elderly person was injured. She's also a person of interest in a homicide case. She was last seen driving a dark blue Dodge truck with New Jersey license plates. If you have any information that can help, you are urged to call police at 210-207-7635. San Antonio police also work in an overnight murder case. A 19 year old man was shot in the head while outside an apartment complex near Starcrest and Hidden Drive on the city's northeast side. He died while on the way to the hospital. Police still searching for a suspect in the case. Moving to the pandemic, it's pitting some nursing homes against hospitals. New hires are becoming more of a challenge as some in the medical field chose to change careers following burnout. The night team's Tiffany Huertas visited one local senior living community who is struggling to fill some critical roles permanently. Sauber Booth's mother stays at Morningside Ministries at the Meadows. She's aware of the staff shortages at the senior living community, but she's also seen how the staff have persevered. The staff has just been, you know, just super you know, trying to keep her motivated and, and active. But there are some challenges for the facility. Finding registered nurses and other health care workers has become increasingly difficult. But it's just taking us months and months to fill that position. And quite honestly, it's because we're competing against hospitals. Even with a $10,000 sign-on bonus, Morningside Ministries Director of Human Resources says it's been difficult finding a registered nurse. For now, they are relying on staffing agencies or other campuses to shuffle nurses around and temporarily fill positions. They aren't alone. The American Healthcare Association and National Center for Assisted Living released a survey this week showing what more than 1,100 providers are dealing with in the U.S. The survey shows that 78% of nursing homes and 71% of assisted living facilities are concerned that these workforce challenges will force them to close. At Morningside, Booth remains confident. I have full trust in them to, to handle the shortages. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Pfizer's booster shot now being made available at the Wonderland of the Americas Mall. University Health opened the clinics back up at the mall today, but there are certain requirements for the booster. You must have received the Pfizer shot for the previous doses. You also must be 65 years or older or 18 and older with underlying health conditions like diabetes or obesity or work in a high risk environment. Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf is set to be 81 soon. He is just one of many who received the booster shot today. Now to a favorite topic of San Antonio Fiesta. Take a look at this. The five finalists for the next year's Fiesta poster unveiled tonight. The theme is resilience. All the posters feature vibrant colors and one include the image of Frida. Another is centered around dance and another features a pinata, all created by local artists. Fiesta membership will now vote on their favorites. The winner will be announced on January 26th at the Witty. From El Salvador to San Antonio, one woman is sharing her culture through food while living her dream. Our coverage of Hispanic Heritage Month still ahead on the Night Beat. Plus, this Friday night's lights are shining bright. Greg Simmons keeping score on tonight's high school football games. Your big game coverage coming up on the Night Beat.
With the help of some hungry customers, a Central American woman is making her lifelong dream come true right here in the Alamo City. In celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, the night team's Patty Santos shows us how a businesswoman is using the art of food to help San Antonio try something new. In celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, I wanted to introduce you to my culture, the Salvadorian culture, the pupusas, but most importantly, the woman who makes them. For Yannette Rosales, sharing her food and teaching others about it brings a sense of pride, starting with the pupusas. A thick tortilla stuffed with savory goodness, cheese, beans, or mixed. Salvadorian tamales also stand out as unique. Fried plantains are a must try. El desayuno típico salvadoreño, acompañado de sus frijolitos fritos y de la crema salvadoreña. Rosales migrated from El Salvador with a dream, but a month into her arrival, that dream was jeopardized in an accident that injured her hand. Yo les decía a los, a los doctores, ¿yo qué voy a hacer si esto es mi herramienta de trabajo? ¿Qué voy a hacer ahora? As quickly as she healed, she started selling her food and built a clientele that launched her food stand in the south side. It took a while for people to learn what pupusas are, but she says as soon as they try them, they're sold. Para mí que las personas vengan y digan, sabes que tus pupusas están bien ricas, tus pupusas están bien sabrosas, y que me dicen que son las mejores que hemos probado, es cuando me dicen eso yo me levo. Her dream is to someday open her own restaurant and continue to share her food and culture with the San Antonio community. If tú quieres llegar a Estados Unidos, vienes por el sueño americano, enfócate a lo que vienes y lo vas a lograr. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, Central Americans make up the second largest foreign-born Latino population in Texas. We're talking more than 500,000. Now, to find out more about her restaurant and other stories in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, head to KSAT.com. Another beautiful day outside today, currently 74 degrees. We've got a clear sky out there. Temperatures falling off pretty efficiently this evening, and we're not going to see any big changes into the weekend, but thereafter, you do have to plan ahead for some noticeable changes and even some rain chances. So a pleasant weekend with low humidity, a lot of sunshine. That humidity is back early next week. First thing at the bus stop Monday morning, you're going to feel it. Rain chances, though, come with that humidity. Let's talk about everything, starting with some temperatures. 57 this morning, what a start to the day, good 10 degrees below average, and then 88 the high, which is exactly average. Right now, 66 in Rio Medina, 73 though, Bulverde, 76 at Stinson Airport on the south side, and Divine 72. Birdie stage as usual, a few degrees cooler, 59 degrees right now. Big picture shows lower 80s in Del Rio, and that's really the exception. Largely, we're in the 60s and 70s. Big picture. A lot of sunshine throughout the day today, clear skies tonight, and it's going to be very similar through the weekend. We'll just have some high clouds coming in from the west. This is our next disturbance. It's been stirring up some showers over the desert southwest and parts of northern Mexico. That disturbance will move our way throughout next week with our best shot at rain looking like it would be about Wednesday time frame. So the middle of the week next week. Also quick update on the tropics. Hurricane Sam out there way out in the Atlantic, staying in the Atlantic, but becoming a major hurricane very soon. Our rain chances here not related to any tropical activity. 0% through the weekend at 20 to 30% Monday and Tuesday. And then we boosted into the scattered category. So 40% Wednesday through Friday of next week. So as we progress through the, the week as it stands now, we have some encouraging rain chances, but tomorrow morning we'll be right near 60 degrees, some 50s in the hill country. By the afternoon, all of us right near 90. Sunny, low humidity, not much of a breeze out there this weekend either. And next week, we don't see a big change in temperatures, for the most part, near 90, Jeffney. Thank you, Adam. Now, I love this kind of weather, Greg, because it puts me in the mindset of my marching band days during high go. school football. You got another exciting night lined up for us. We got it all covered for you tonight, and the scene was set in the big game and our big game coverage tonight. They came right down to the wire. Who wins the battle of the unbeatens between Johnson and Brandeis? We'll show you, and we also have a very wild big game coverage road trip coming up. We're the Johnson Cheerleaders, and you're watching big game coverage on KSAT 12. Yeah! Let's go, Johnson! 
Yes, you are. The big game on our big game coverage tonight featured number four, Johnson hosting number eight, Brandeis in a battle of the unbeatens in District 28-6A at Hero Stadium. The Broncos up a TD in the first and are going to extend their lead when Nico Garcia hits Clark Ulrich in the flat. He slips one tackle, races to the end zone, dies for the 14 to nothing lead, but the Jags bite back. Quarterback Cruz Irwin pump fakes and then takes off up the middle for the seven-yard score to cut the Broncos lead down to seven. The Jags take control in the third then. Running back Ben McCreary bursts through the line. He's gone 64 yards all the way to the house to make it 21-17 Johnson. A little later on, the Jags go to the air. This time, Kerwin is going deep. Ty Hawkins down the sign of 52 yard scores, 28 to 17 Jags. Johnson hangs on to a 28-22 on a Hail Mary interception. We had a plan, we just had to execute it. And our whole team, we are giving maximum effort, practice the whole time. And we just came out and executed, and so it's going to give us a lot of confidence. I mean, this is a big win here, and now we're just ready for the next. All right, the Roosevelt Rough Riders in a district showdown tonight with MacArthur Bramas in the air, riding rough shot over the Bramas. Quarterback Byron Rotter on the option read decides to keep it and takes off right out the middle, goes 36 yards untouched for the touchdown, 7 nothing Roosevelt. Next possession works so good the first time. Let's run it again. Rotter on the option read keeps it again this time from 33 yards out again. He goes in untouched, 14 nothing Roosevelt. The final from Comalander. There you see it, 41 to 14. The Wagner Thunderbirds looking to hand the number two Steel Knights their first loss of the season. Third quarter, Wagner down 13 7 to Steel, but not for long. Darian Thomas is going to get the pitch. Easily scores from six yards out. The Thunderbirds take the lead 14-13. Steele doesn't break. Receiver Joe Perez comes in motion, going to get the pitch. He goes around the left side for the seven-yard score. They go for two and get it. Steele takes the lead back 21-14. The final from Rutledge. Steele hangs on for the win 28-21. It is out to Linhoff Stadium now to check out the Clemens Buffaloes hosting the struggling Judson Rockets. Buffaloes start their stampede early. Lazaric Banks gets the handoff, starts to his left before cutting back right, and he breaks free. Watch the big hit that pops the ball loose. Clemens gets lucky as Ronald Gardner dies on the ball to keep it at our line. The Buffalo stay on the ground this time. Torian Smith will get the carry. Powers his way in for the first touchdown of the game. 10-0 Clemens. We will depart. Let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final. Clemens knocks off Judson. Judson now drops to 1-4. and four. Shocking. Steal over Wagner. 28-21. Elsewhere in week 5, you see Johnson holds off Brandeis and MacArthur falls to Roosevelt. 41-14. Marshall flags flying high at Ferris Stadium tonight. 3-1 Rams go up against the winless O'Connor Panthers tonight. The Rams get on the board first. They pitch to Anthony Conway, he gets some great blocking up front. Looking to go down the sideline, no one's going to catch him. 65 yards to the house. They made it 7 nothing. Rams, the final from Ferris. Look at that. Connor tries to come back, but Marshall wins 42-38. Meantime, the Warren cheerleaders welcome us to Gustafson Stadium, where they're hosting Stevens. When we arrive, it's tied to 7 all in the second quarter. Fourth and two for Warren on the Stevens 35-yard line. Hand the ball up to Najeri Henderson. It looks like he's going to get stopped out of the line of scrimmage. He somehow manages to break free, finds the lane. 35 yards of the score, 14-7 Warrior and Warren gets the win 44 28. Pack House and Bernie to watch champion Chargers host El Campo Ricebirds. The Ricebirds doing it on the ground. Receiver DK Ward coming to motion, gets a handoff. Look at that lane open up in front of him. Turns on the speed, gone 68 yards to the 7 0 Ricebird lead. Next possession for El Campo, Ruben Owens. This time he's going to get the rock. He scores from eight yards out. El Campo races out early to a 14 0 lead. Let's head back to the big game coverage scoreboard to see if that has gone final. Bernie champion falls 55 10. This game moved to Saturday at 7 o'clock at East Central. Marshall edges out O'Connor 42-38. Warren over Stevens 44-28. How about those Lanier Vokes starting their season 3-0, looking to go 4-0 tonight against the Kennedy Rock in second quarter. The Vokes are up by 1-14-13. When we arrive, Lanier looking to extend that lead. That's quarterback Xavier Tejas going to keep it. Gains 14 yards right up the middle. Fourth and goal now for Lanier. Tejas again powered his way up the middle, stretches the ball over the Touchdown, 21-13 Lanier, the final from Edgewood Veterans. They get the win again, staying undefeated, 34-13. Over the rock pile, the Brackenridge cheerleaders have reason to yell. The Eagles are up 21-7 with 12 seconds left of the first half. They're not slowing down. Fourth and two on the Burbank 23. Richard Lopez to Brandon Garcia on the quick out. Picks up nine yards, first down. And next play, Lopez hits Marquise Anthony, dies for the end zone, gets it. Brack led by three touchdowns of the break. And at Alamo State in the final, Brackenridge 48-14. Over at SAISD Sports Complex, Edison taking on Sam Houston bears in control early third quarter up 27 nothing quarterback Roger Lopez slings it to Alexis Calderon for the 22 yard touchdown 34 nothing lead the final from SEISD 
is Edison with the shutout, 33 to nothing. Homecoming over to Harlandale for the Indians to take on the Patriots Veterans Memorial. Patriots on the 14-yard line, face a fourth and one, go for it. James Peoples gets the handoff, fights for the first down, gets in and then some. Look, he get by that defender, run into a teammate, keeps going, almost gets tackled, but keeps on his feet. Down the sideline, goes all the way to the Indians, 44-yard line for a 50-yard gain. Later in the drive, Alex Alva rolls out to his right, can't find anyone, keeps the ball, finds Pater from 18 yards out, 7-0 Patriots. Back to the big game cover scoreboard for that final as well. Harlandale falls for the first time 28 to 21. Lanier over Kennedy to stay undefeated 34 13. Elsewhere, Brackenridge with a big win over Burbank and a big shutout for Edison over Sam Houston 33 to nothing. Homecoming tonight is Southside High School. Cardinals looking to get back at the win column tonight against Laredo Martin. Southside leads 35 0 third. They're going to add to that. The late handoff goes to Michael Nunez, who bursts through the line, races to the end zone untouched. 31 yard touchdown, 42 0 lead. Let's see if that's gone final. It has 49 0 Southside. The Ballon Billies of Fredericksburg back at home tonight taking on the Bernie Greyhounds. Home team strikes first. Cole Emmo gets it out to Mason Ree. He powers into the end zone for the nine yard score. Seven nothing Billies. Greyhounds respond later in that frame. Riley Pachasek takes the direct snap. Nice in for the five yard touchdown to make it a one point game. The final from Fredericksburg. Bernie comes back for the big win. 33 17. Let's head to Gobbler Stadium. And Quero taking on undefeated Somerset. Late first half. Gobbler's up 26. Looking for more quarterback. Jerry Reset lobs it to Xavier Durham. Wide open for the 38 yard touchdown. That's the third TD of the first half. Quero leads 27 6 at halftime. The final from Gobbler Stadium. Quero with the win 41 13. The Rohawks is chilling. It stands at the Mickler Memorial Field. Randolph hosting comfort. Home team is up 20 7 in the third quarter. Michael Brown takes a handoff. Running left. Finds a crease. Takes it down to the one yard line. Next play. Colton Howard dives over the goal line for the touchdown of the 27 7 lead. Well, let's go back. The big game coverage scoreboard for that final and much more. Randolph gets big win tonight at home 34 7. South side over Laredo Martin in that big shutout 49 0. Quero outlaws Somerset 41 13. Bernie over Fredericksburg 33 17. We're just getting started. Up next, our big game coverage road trip, fan cam, more highlights, and more scores. But first, let's listen to the Steel Knights Marching Band. The McComb Cowboys taking the field to face Dripping Springs Tigers, District 12, 5A, Division 1. They were flipping now. First quarter, Tigers ball. Quarterback Austin Nelfasad throws right at the camera in the end zone, and Kyle Koch makes a nice grab here. 13 yards. The Tigers lead 14-0. The student section at Wimberley is always having a lot of fun. The Texans hosting Alabama Heights Mules tonight. Second quarter, no score. Less than three minutes to go. Mules quarterback James Sobey throws to Bo Kleberg for the big 27-yard gain into Wimberley territory. Two plays later, the Texans' Moses Ray blows through the the line sacking Sobe for a 10 yard loss. This was tied zero all at halftime. We had to get out of there because 31 minutes later we were in Blanco where it's a Cowboys hat night. The Panthers hosting three rivers. Third quarter Panthers leading 26 7 adding on C quarterback Cameron Anderson throws it to Cody Cross in the back corner of the end zone 17 yard touchdown two point conversion was good. Blanco led 34 to 7. Let's head to the scoreboard. We're having a little trouble with Larry's live shot. So there you see Dripping Springs with a big win. Alamo Heights win. <laughs> look at that just seven nothing is a pound that one. Blanco over three rivers 34 to seven. Time now for fan cam where your fans help us cover one of the big games in a big game coverage tonight. Here's our Andrew Seeley. The student section at Central Catholic posing for a group picture before the Buttons home game against San Antonio Christian tonight and the team is rolling on the field. First quarter home team already up 7-0. Caden Hernandez is there for the interception on the overthrow. He returns it all the way back to the 36-yard line. Great field position and on the very next play quarterback Silas Gomez fires downfield for Jackson Deason who hauls it in, stays on his feet and scores. 14-0 Buttons. The onslaught continues. Next Central Catholic drive. Gomez drops it in a bucket for Decent again. This one's a 31-yard strike, and just like that, it's 21-0. That is the score as fan cam departs midway through the first quarter. Central Catholic leading 21-0. From Bob Benson Stadium, Andrew Seeley, KSAT 12 Sports. Thank you, Andrews. Take a look at some more final scores. Here you see Central Catholic huge win over San Antonio Christian. Brownsville St. Joseph over St. Anthony 46-28. You saw that Southwest down in Rio Grande City 28-7. Big win for Seguin over New Braunfels Canyon tonight. Pleasant and down in Pearson on a shutout 52-0. Another shutout for Divine over Luling. 19 and nothing. Austin Johnson over Cornerstone, 41-26. Another shout out for Cal Allen over Kerrville Tivy tonight up in Kerrville. Marion, that is their fifth win in a row. First time in its school history. They started a season five and oh, congratulations to them. And Floresville over Lavernia, 37-34. Poti with a big win against Cole tonight at home, 41-6. And it was TMI over Charlotte, 49. You saw that one. Poth over Carn City, 48 to nothing. Kennedy down in Lavia, 23-6. We will be back with more.
after this.